Friends, today we're diving into common mistakes people make in homes and what they regret after building their dream house. There are a ton of these stories. I even have close friends love visited. And when we start talking openly, I ask, what would you do differently? They list out all these choices they would change. So friends, today's video is packed with useful info for anyone planning or dreaming about their own country home. So make sure to watch until the end. Let's dive into the first point. Ceiling height. Actually, in houses, you can afford to have slightly higher ceilings, and within the whole budget for a house, this doesn't really impact the overall cost much. If you increase the ceiling height by about 8 inches, it won't cost much more, but you'll gain a lot more open space, making the room feel much airier and better. So friends, aim for ceilings over 10 feet, ideally about 10.5 feet. For a sense of open space, it'll make the room feel so much bigger. Moving on to the next point. The next point is the staircase. Small or awkward stairs, uncomfortable steps, or inconvenient placement of the staircase. In fact, the staircase is a whole special part of a house. In our company, we even test architects and designers applying to work with us on their staircase designs. If you make the steps the wrong size, climbing them can be a real pain. So what's the best approach with stairs? First, you need to be super careful with staircase design. Pay close attention to where the staircase is placed. Ideally, it should be in the center of the house so it's easy to reach from various parts of the home. In larger houses, getting from the living room or kitchen to the upstairs bedrooms can take quite a while. Doing that constantly might drive you a bit crazy, or it could turn you into an athlete, which can be good, but for older folks, that could be a bit tough. Actually, if you have older family members living there or you plan to stay in this home into your later years, a single-story home is a much better option. Single-story houses are also less expensive to build. Plus, if you put guest rooms on the second floor, you probably won't go up there much at all. Recently, we filmed a video on a photographer's house. He told us his main bedroom is on the first floor, while the guest rooms are upstairs. He pretty much never goes upstairs. So if your plot allows for it, a single-story house is usually better than a two-story one. Friends, if you're planning a house and want a stylish, functional, modern design without the mistakes I've been talking about, feel free to reach out to our studio. We work worldwide with projects in Indonesia, Russia, the United Arab Emirates, the United States, Germany, and many other countries. To see our portfolio, just check the link in the description. Next up is the topic of spaces for sports and relaxation. For example, home gyms, home theaters, or billiard rooms. When you're designing a home, think about which rooms you actually need. Generally, people with home gyms still end up going to a gym club instead. There are simply more machines, extra classes, and social interaction. So, people typically go somewhere else for workouts anyway. Billiard rooms often get used once a week at most, or sometimes they get used just once and then never again. Even home theaters, unless you're a huge movie buff, you'll likely rarely use them. Sometimes it's easier to go to a real theater to watch a great movie or just watch it on your computer or in the living room. These rooms take up space, need maintenance, heating, and rarely get used. So think twice about whether you need these spaces and how often you'd actually use them. Moving on to the next point, which is often related to these spaces, the basement floor. People often think that if they're already laying a deep foundation, they might as well add an extra floor down there. It might even seem like it won't cost much extra in construction. But honestly, the main cost of a house isn't just the structure. It's in the square footage you need to furnish and finish. That includes work for builders, engineers, and everything else. A lot of the budget goes into finishing. Generally, huge resources are spent on a basement for waterproofing. You also need stairs to get down to this level. So, it's a big expense and you might hardly use it. Think twice about having a basement. It'll require upkeep, cleaning, and heating. Usually people end up regretting building a basement. Friends, I really enjoy interacting with you in the comments. I reply to all comments, so feel free to write, ask questions, and don't be shy. Let's keep going. The next point is something that often gets carried over from apartments to houses. People moving from apartments to houses sometimes bring certain apartment habits with them. This usually has to do with the number of bathrooms. You can't just have one bathroom in a house. For three bedrooms, you need at least two bathrooms, and each floor should definitely have its own bathroom. For those who haven't lived in a house, here's another common regret, putting the laundry room on a different floor than the bedrooms. For instance, if your bedrooms are on the second floor, but the laundry room is on the first, you'll constantly have to run up and down carrying clothes when doing laundry. It ends up being super inconvenient. The next thing people often carry over from apartments is the size of bathrooms. Bathrooms in apartments are often really compact, 
due to space limitations. But in houses, we have the space to go big. You can create a large, spacious bathroom with a window and a full-size, convenient cabinet. You can make the bathroom accessible from the walk-in closet or add a second door leading from the bedroom. Don't make your bathrooms tiny. Don't bring apartment layouts into your house. And continuing with things people often bring from apartments, not having a spacious pantry close to the kitchen. It's incredibly convenient when you have a full-size kitchen with an extra door that opens to a spacious pantry where you can store a lot of food and supplies, you can stock up on mineral water, wine, everything you'd want to store close to the kitchen. Since typically people in houses buy a lot of supplies at once, and having a full pantry right next to the kitchen is super handy. When it's within the reach of your kitchen work triangle, it's especially convenient. You won't have to run back and forth across the house. So consider placing the pantry close to the kitchen. Another common mistake is the number of entrance doors in a house. You have the main entrance, which is closest to the road. There's an entrance from the garage. So when you arrive by car, you can enter the house directly. The garage can be enclosed or open, but there should be a way to enter without having to run outside to the main entrance. And of course, an entrance from the opposite side, like near the lawn area. These two to three entrances are essential in a house. Think about any additional entrances you might need. For instance, if you want a sauna, you might want to step directly outside to the lawn and jump into a pool or cold plunge. If you have a sauna, consider this extra entrance. The next point is about having an oversized house. Often people design such large houses that they become nearly impossible to build. I can share a personal story about this. I have a relative who's been trying to finish his enormous house for his entire life. For about 30 years, it's been in a constant state of renovation. If you know anyone like that, share in the comments. And by the way, a lot of homes remain unfinished because people want them too big. So what's the right way to approach this? First, think about which rooms and functions you truly need right now. For example, maybe you plan to have children and will need a nursery, but at this moment, it's not necessary. So what's the best approach? Design the house so it can grow with your family. For example, when you have a child, you can expand with an additional module, like a guest room. Start with essentials, like the kitchen, living room, dining room, your bedroom, and a small office. In the next phase, you can add a spa complex, sauna, or small pool. Build these extras a bit later, then, as children come along, you can add another room. This way, your house can expand according to your family's needs. This approach allows you to start enjoying your home much sooner, rather than waiting to build a massive 10,000 square foot home. Everything should be built based on actual needs. By the way, continuing on the topic of rooms. Often people plan a lot of guest rooms in houses, or at least one guest room. It's best to combine the guest room with some additional function. For example, an office with a separate sofa or a foldable bed where you can accommodate guests. It's always convenient when one room serves two purposes. So consider which rooms you can combine. Otherwise, guest rooms usually just collect dust and aren't used regularly. But if it doubles as an office or has another purpose, it will get regular use. The next point is balconies. Typically, in houses, people want to have nice, pretty balconies on the second floor, imagining themselves sipping coffee there in the morning. You'll use the balcony very rarely. So friends, it's better to make use of terraces. They're much more enjoyable than small balconies. But if you really want to have a balcony, go for it. It's your home, and only you know how you'll use it. The next point that people forget is the absence of a walk-in closet. Design your home to have not just a large wardrobe, but a full spacious walk-in closet where you can store all the items you need. You can even add a makeup area and place a stylish island in the center for your jewelry, belts, and other small items. It's very convenient and stylish. Let's move on. What else do people regret? It's standard interior doors in homes with high ceilings. High doors, in fact, visually elevate the space, making the ceiling appear taller by creating a vertical line. So try to use tall doors in your house, because if you use short, low doors with high ceilings, there will be a visual imbalance and it won't look as nice. Think about this at the design stage. Another important point many people regret, and this may not be directly about design, is the home's location. When you start building, think about where your house is located, how convenient it will be to commute from there, and how easy it will be to take your kids to school. Location really matters. In my experience, I've seen people build houses to live in permanently, only to move back to apartments because their whole lives were centered in the city. So choose a very suitable location, otherwise your house may become just a vacation spot. Well, I hope you enjoyed all my tips. See you in the next videos. Bye-bye.